Shalom. This is your host, Pastor Enoch Perry. Welcome to The Journey, a show where we profile prominent members of our community who have made it against all odds. Today, in our studios, we have uh, Advocate Tuli Madonsela. Welcome to the show, Advocate. Thank you, Pastor, and greetings to a, the a viewers. A, a, it is really a great honor having you on our program today. That one is mine. Praise God. Uh, you are one of the most powerful women in Africa. And how did this great journey start? Tell us about your childhood. I had an ordinary childhood, uh, brought up between Soweto in Johannesburg, mm. uh, Jobbik these days, yeah, yeah. and uh, a village in Switzerland. Okay. The reason I ended up in a village was my my parents, my, my father's roots, my father my father's ancestors mm -hmm. were from Switzerland. Okay. And he also uh, had a taxi business okay. between South Africa and Switzerland. Not mm -hmm. really taxis those days. They were mm -hmm. using those vans yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and putting people at the back of the van. Mm -hmm. And he sent us there to study. Okay. Yes. Wow. Powerful. To, to Swaziland. Yes. But we were not exiled. So okay. we were okay. commuting between oh, yeah. Swaziland and Soweto. And was it possible in those days to travel between Swaziland and uh, Yeah, it was South very possible. In fact, a lot of people would travel how he had this taxi industry mm -hmm. or this van taxi mm. okay, okay. was every Friday he would take these people to Swaziland mm -hmm. and every Sunday mm -hmm. he would drop them one by one to their different workplaces, a lot of them being domestic workers and, and other migrant workers. Wonderful, yes. wonderful. Now how would you describe your childhood? Was it, uh, uh, are you coming from a well-to-do family? or you had your own challenges, given that uh, in those days, uh, African people were uh, marginalized by the right. states. Well, I, I came from a black family and okay. a black working class family. Okay. I've always regarded myself as having been poor. Okay. Uh, recently, somebody told me that because we had cars, we were not poor. <laughs> okay. uh, but. It was your, your typical four-roomed house, oh. which is we still have in yes. Lamini yeah. Soweto. Yeah. Okay. A toilet mm -hmm. outside where if you want to go to the bathroom at night, mm -hmm. you go outside. If you want to wash, mm -hmm. you've got to use a basin. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we sort of didn't starve because my father had, hadn't had an education because okay. he, he, he grew up on a farm mm -hmm. in, in, in Daha's Crawl okay. in, in Pumalanga. Okay. He had never yes. seen the inside of the classroom. They mm -hmm. were not allowed. Mm -hmm. But he had self-educated himself just to be able to read the wow. Bible. Yes. He wow. always was always sitting there reading mm -hmm. the Bible. Mm -hmm. And but he had worked hard mm -hmm. and accumulated some money mm -hmm. and um, he didn't build a big house. He had the one that the municipality gave to mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. And he he bought cars which he was using in this um, taxi-like yeah. business, and then later, as a an informal trader, he had sort of a mobile tax shop. Mm. Again, one of those pioneers to mm. do the mm. the, the, the spazi shops. Wow! And he built the back rooms for himself. My mother was a domestic worker. Okay. By the time though, I was. Uh, aware of my family, mm -hmm. she wasn't a domestic worker, she was an informal trader who okay. was selling uh, little things at, mm -hmm. at school and we used to go with my parents mm -hmm. we were required to go with my parents Absolutely. when they went to sell those things mm -hmm. at the school and and on the road, but we were paid for our services. Oh, well, that's great, that's great. Okay. Yes. Now, now, Advocate, uh, you, you mentioned that your father taught himself how to read so yes. that he could uh, read the Bible. Yes. Now, I assume, I assume you are coming from a Christian family background. Yes. My, my family was very spiritual. Mm. Uh, my father was uh, came from a Methodist background okay. because his mother was Methodist. Okay. My mother was Seventh-day Adventist. Okay. So we grew up, we brought up as Seventh-day Adventists okay. mostly. Mm. But when we were studying in Swaziland, my, mm. my grandmother was also Methodist mm -hmm. and we so we went to church on Saturday okay, and okay. on Sunday. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> okay. Yes. Now, how did uh, 
Christianity influence your thinking as a child? Uh, I think it shaped my thoughts, basically, because everything I do has a spiritual dimension. Mm. I believe that I'm a spiritual being. Mm. I believe that I'm not an accident. Mm. I that I was created by God for a purpose. Mm. But I believe that everyone I meet also is an expression of God. Absolutely. Even if they may be annoying, mm -hmm. but <laughs> there they is a piece of God Absolutely. in them. And so as I deal with them, I have to reflect on that. Wow. And um, it also then gave me an idea to bring up my children in the same way. In mm. fact, um, I took my children out of a, an ordinary school and I put them at Hatfield, Hatfield Christian School oh, nice. when they're young oh, nice. because I felt that at that stage I wouldn't have the ability to give them the, that spiritual foundation. Mm -hmm. And I would give them part of it, but I was very busy as a parent yeah, yeah. and the church then would give them the same foundation that I was given mm. by my church and my parents because my father in particular was somebody who was always reading the Bible. Mm. We were the, one of those families where you you always have to sing at night okay. before you, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. sleep and read the Bible mm -hmm. and, 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 and pray together as a family. Wow, powerful. How, how many are you in your family? Oh, there were so many of us, mm -hmm. although now uh, a lot of them have passed on. Mm -hmm. And the, the remaining one between my, for my, from my father and mother's side, mm -hmm. the, there's only three of us alive. And mm -hmm. then we, we do have brothers and we would call them half brothers yeah, okay. who English, are my father's yeah, children English, much English. older than yeah, us okay. and Davidton and my lady mm -hmm. and on my mother's side we have one brother mm, wonderful yeah. wonderful it's a, it's a amazing to see that uh, prominent people of your caliber have got a christian foundation which simply mean that uh, uh, when uh, you are not doing what you do when you are in your space, you seek the face of the Lord, don't you? Absolutely. Um, I have conversations with God, mm -hmm. whether I'm praying or just just having literally a conversation, just trying to make sense mm. of whatever it is that doesn't make sense to me. Absolutely. And, and that opportunity to also hand over to God the things that I believe are beyond my control. Absolutely. There's absolutely nothing I can do absolutely. about them. I have that opportunity to, to hand it over to him and trust that it will be resolved uh, in, in, in my best interests. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are in conversation with uh, Advocate uh, Tuli Madonzela. We're going to take a music break and we'll come back more about the journey of Advocate Tuli Madonzela. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Uh, I'm in conversation with uh, Advocate Tuli Madonsela, sharing her journey with us. Uh, uh, Advocate, as a teenager, what highlights do you have to share with uh, our brothers and sisters out there? Wow, okay. What do I recall of my, my teens? I think perhaps I would recall three areas of my life during okay. my teens. One is uh, what happened in June 16. Okay. I was at school though in oh. Swaziland. You were in Swaziland. I was in Swaziland when June 16 happened. Okay. But August in, in Swaziland, the school term ends in August. When okay. we came back home, things were still smoldering. Mm -hmm. And there was there was always something happening at Regina Mundi, mm -hmm. either a funeral or some kind of, of event. And always running away and ducking and diving mm. uh, those caspers. Mm, mm. So that was basically, uh, I, I, my teenage years, I remember them just going to Regina mm. Mundi and, okay. and um, sort of the beginning of my awakening because getting exposed to these uh, kinds of, uh, of issues around what's happening in our country. Mm. Although my father had all this exposed us, okay. uh, he yeah. had a lot of respect for Mandela. Okay. He, he spoke about him and his courage all the mm -hmm. time. 
at school, what I would remember during my teenage years um, is uh, the fact that um, what was happening around that was important. Other than that, I was in the music choir. Is I it? was in the school okay, choir. Can you sing? N no, I, not <laughs> idols kind of singing. I can't sing in the okay, shower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my children's friends yeah. think I sing well. Yeah, okay. I don't want to sing gospel music yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. And, and at, at my school, we were also allowed to have those, uh, your, your, your little um, quartet or a little group. So I had my my trio, uh, mm. me and 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 two of my friends mm. always liked to go and sit. Okay. Being a young person, wow. always liked to go and stand there in front of the assembly and sing. And there was some guy, Her Harry Van Castle, who used to play the piano okay. for us. Okay. Wow. And at church, I was one of those people who was very super active. Mm. This was Seventh Day Adventist, okay, yes, yes. and you. There's the Sabbath school in the morning, mm -hmm. and if you're active, you might be allocated to teach a children's class okay. or something like that. And mm -hmm. there's church during the day. Again, we had our trio that was singing all the time. Mm -hmm. like my, my younger sister, who passed on, Kumbuzile, mm -hmm. and a friend of mine, were always singing. Okay. And then we had uh, a, a youth thing in the afternoon mm -hmm. where I we were uh, we would be teaching each other i was active in that mm. and on sundays we would then have community service our church always looked after its own people mm. and always looked after other people okay. in the now, it this actually is the church in yes. Swaziland in particular this is the seventh day adventist yeah. but the same the same approach was used by the seventh day adventist oh, okay. church okay. here in in oh, snow okay. okay. yes Powerful, powerful. Yes. I know that uh, when you attend classes at, uh, at uh, Seventh Day Adventist, you get grounded. Yes. For, for so many years, I've been reading the writings of E.G. White. It's very much inspiring. Very it much is. Inspiring. Yeah, it is. Yeah, absolutely. Now, during this period, as, as a youngster, did you face any challenges like boys <laughs> and, uh, and uh, any normal okay. uh, issues which face our young people? besides the political atmosphere in South Africa? Yes. Well, uh, what would have been the challenges? I think, um, no, I, I think when I was in, in the teenagers, yes, there, there were those uh, uh, one or two issues <laughs> with boys, but uh, I, I wasn't into boys. I think I had, I, I had my first relationship when I was already in, in matric, mm. not matric, or mm -hmm. just before matric, yes. Mm. Mm. Wow. But you know, boys who go to, to the same church with you mm -hmm. are not problematic. Yeah, I yeah. think the problematic ones came much later <laughs> when I was no longer <laughs> in church. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think my experience with Seventh-day Adventists was um, at the time an authentic kind of Christian life because mm. there was a lot of teaching around mm -hmm. not imagine. just worshipping but a Christian mm. around how do you live a life, mm. how do you live a worthy life, how do you treat fellow human beings, mm. how do you treat yourself. I don't smoke, I don't drink because those were things, Absolutely. teachings at church about Absolutely. and how, not to poison your body but not to poison yourself but also Absolutely. how do you treat the next person. Mm. Mm. As the Bible says, yes. that train up a child in the way a child should go, so that when they grow up, they won't depart from it. So um, your, your Christian foundation is very strong. I, I think it, it was very strong, but I'm, I'm not going to say that I was always straight and narrow thereafter. In yeah, fact, yeah. I have a very strange uh, journey when it comes to spirituality. Okay. I was a staunch Christian, the one who's always praying, the one who's always finding an opportunity to preach at school, mm. at church, to stand in front of me, wow. whether I'm going to preach or whether I'm going to... Mm. And it's a stage they tried to marry me off to your pastor. <laughs> but I was so young for that <laughs> bit. But wow. then I became an atheist, total atheist. atheist, not an agnostic, an atheist. Wow. Uh, yes, in my... <laughs> you shocked in my uh, young adult life. When I went to university, 
I I became a Marxist. You know, okay. Marx yes, thinks that religion is the yes, opium yes. of it yeah. is the opium religion of the people. Opium. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. wow. Yes. Wow. 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 This is powerful. Uh, we will continue this discussion next week as we talk about uh, how the advocate discovered purpose for his life and where he is uh, currently. Before we close, I just want to share with you from the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 29, where the Bible says, For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. Thank you very much, Advocate, for having you on our show. It's been an honor. And uh, God bless you. Thank you very much to our viewers. God bless you. And uh, till meet next week. Thank you.